Hi everyone, my name is Stephen Kilger. I'm the managing editor of Feeding Grain magazine and the host of the Feeding Grain podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today as we dive deep into the issues affecting the feed manufacturing, grain handling, and allied industries. Today, I'm speaking with Carlton Skipper, the Southeast Regional Manager for Viacan. We're here to talk about how to perform mycotoxin testing at feed mills in order to get the best results for you and your staff. Before we start, if you're listening to this podcast in a podcasting app, please rate us and subscribe. If you're listening online, sign up for the Feed and Grain newsletter, Industry Watch, to see the latest podcasts and stay up to date with all the latest news from around the industry. Thank you so much for listening. Now, on to the show. Thanks for coming and being on the podcast. Uh, would you mind telling me and the listeners a little bit more about yourself and what you do in the industry? Yes. Hi, my name is Carlton, last name Skipper, and I am with Vicam, and I am the Southeast Regional ma uh, Manager for the region, concentrating mostly on the Southeast area of the United States for test kits, equipment, and mycotoxin solutions. Thank you for being here today, Carlton. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, can you provide a little bit of an overview on the importance of mycotoxin testing in feed mills, even in grain elevators, and how that can impact the quality and safety of uh, grain feed products? Well, the importance of testing at, at, the, at, the, at the feed mill is essential. Um, you're looking at incoming ingredients coming into the, the facility, that, that need to be checked. And then they're basically from there, they're going to be housed and they're going to be stored and either used at the facility and or processed for other things such as feed. And um, it's very important that all along that way that the integrity of the, the product is checked and it's good for either human consumption or for animal feed. And that's the task at hand when you're looking at testing at the at, at the level of the um, the feed mills. Um, so, what are some of the advantages and challenges in implementing mycotoxin testing directly at feed mills? Um, and uh, how does this approach impact like the speed and efficiency of decision makings as you have new loads coming in and it's harvest time and everything's busy? How how does that kind of work? Well, I think at the at the level of incoming, there's an awareness of the dangers associated with mycotoxin contamination, and it's led the feed mills to say that they need to be doing this test. They know that. Um, and as they seek out the, the solutions, I think with that comes challenges. And um, I, I think from a standpoint of all the way from in testing the incoming, the, the receiving, all the way through loadout and that becomes an issue of when do we test, how do we test, and the frequency of, of testing. So these are the challenges that are at the, at the mill, if you will, and having that conversation with the locations is where do we start? You know, where, where do we have that, 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 that discussion of where's their pain points, uh, what are they testing for? How are they testing now? And how we can provide alternative solutions. Sure. Um, and could you discuss some of the technologies and methods that are being used now out there in the field? Uh, what are people, what type of tests are people normally doing at a feed mill? Well, the, the testing methodologies have, have really uh, taken a turn for the, for the better, if you will, uh, over the course of years. It's gone from where they were utilizing the black light technology to today where the advancements in technique have led to lateral flow tests, um, tests that utilize, that utilize uh, non-toxic materials. So the, 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 there, are, there are many different applications. You have your lateral flow quick tests that are out there available all the way through fluorometric testing, all the way to HPLC. And it all did, and mass spec, which is at the laboratory. Uh, it, and it all depends where that particular customer is or end user is. If they're a smaller type organization, 
They, they may be using just a lateral flow type tests that gives them a quick reproducible answer uh, that gives them a good indicator of what they're dealing with when it comes to mycotoxin contamination. There are, there are many different providers out there of testing, but very few that offer the breadth of companies such as Vicam that has a incoming test all the way through to the end test, which is at the laboratory confirmatory test. So there's many different solutions out there today. Yeah, I mean, um, I've been in the industry for 11 years now, I think, and um, and everything's changed so much even in my time. Uh, it seems like there have been rapid advancements in both like, well, the quality of these tests and how accurate they are. I remember uh, Cargill, right? They put out that big world mycotoxin report. What was that a few months ago? And they're not sure if mycotoxin te- or mycotoxins and grains are, you know, on the rise or if we're just testing more <laughs> or if the tests are just getting better in finding more. Uh, can you talk a little bit about like the different types? Because you mentioned a few there. Uh, can you kind of explain the differences? Yes, y- you have you have tests such as on-site T- testing that are performed, for example, with the lateral flow test, a test that utilizes a uh, non-toxic uh, detergent and actually just washing the sample. And it and from that, you get an extraction, you put that into the test, and you get a result. And that result is bankable. Uh, it is a great first indicator in the step of what that matrice you're testing for, it, if it doesn't indeed have uh, contamination, they are that sensitive. The parts per billion, or in some of the tests, parts per million, uh, th- they are very sensitive. So gone are the days of, as we talked earlier, of the black light type approach where it's very subjective and um, a qualitative type test which they still have qualitative tests, but here you're getting, it's quantitative. It's a quantitative test. And those are the tests by which I, I, I see the industry really relying upon as being a good first indicator in the approach to testing at the feed mills. Yeah. And um, they're not as complicated as they used to be, right? Like it's not that much training to teach your kind of uh the people in the in the control room the sampling room uh right. how to do these so you get really quick results right absolutely and, and that's a big part of it too face it they're not in the testing business than the food business and i think when you take out the steps of the many different steps that are involved in some of the testing techniques that are out there it leads to it could lead to confusion. It could lead to complacency and strain from the process. And so that, that is very key in when you're looking at a mycotoxin test is, you know, what are the steps? Is this something that the average layman can do? Or somebody that is, like I said, in the industry of uh, a feed and they're not in the testing industry. So it, it, it really... Um, it's very important. Yeah, definitely. And and faster too, right? Because these guys, they tend to be pretty busy. So in an, I I would think in an ideal solution, you know, you have your, 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 your truck probe, you can automate that now. So it takes multiple samples in different spots. And then you have your person, you know, doing the test and then moving them along. Is that kind of how you guys tend to explain the workflow to people? Uh, what is kind of the idealized workflow at a, at a feed mill? Well, and, and it goes back to, you know, conversation. And that is, you know, you have some of these locations that really have uh, a lot of trucks. They, they, they have, they have, they have, uh, that they have these trucks lined up there and time is of importance. They need to get that load. Uh, they need, need to get that truck unloaded and they need a quick, reliable answer. And these tests are designed now where not only can you get a quick, reliable answer, but you can stagger some of the tests where you're actually doing more than one truck at a time and so that really helps in the process they get the actionable result that they're looking for they dump the load and they move on to the next one 
And that is very key in, in the determination of uh, if they're going to do testing or who they're going to be do, uh, what tests they're going to bring on board. Mm -hmm. and, and there's still a place for a laboratory testing, right? Um, especially um, from what I understand, if you're shipping internationally, sometimes you have to do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think the key here is that you, you want not only an actionable result, uh, a test that will provide an actionable, an actionable result, but you want you want that test to have, uh, you want it to be a reproducible test, a test that you can take that that uh, reading, if you will, and and take it to, uh, if you were to take it that same test down the line, you would get a like result. Uh, from a from an outside laboratory. Um, now, of course, those uh, findings will skew a, somewhat, but it should not uh, change the prognosis, if you will, diagnosis of, of what you're looking at. Yeah, exactly. And, and what's kind of like the cost difference? Because it seems like they're also getting a lot more affordable, uh, especially when compared to sending stuff out to the lab and having someone do it. Uh, is there a little bit of savings involved if you're doing it on site versus, you know, sending it off to a lab to get samples done? Oh, absolutely. I, I think you win on all accords. Uh, you, you, you're getting a you're getting a test result at a much cheaper uh, cost, and you're getting it at real time. So if there is a situation that needs to, uh, where that load needs to be diverted, actionable results can take place and at, 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 a, uh, at a less cost. So I think you win on all, on all fronts there. But also, there is a time always to send to the laboratory for confirmatories, things along that line. But for, from a first line defense uh, with your mycotoxin program, these tests, these um, these quick these tests are, um, are 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 more than adequate, and they are they, they, like I said, they are the first line in the defense of uh, mycotoxin contamination testing so yeah and i i hear people are now testing on on both sides uh so as green comes in and then as kind of finished product goes or is finished product is finished uh and uh stored uh i hear people are doing it um at both spots which uh seems like it's really kind of a, a situation that wouldn't be very easy to accomplish with traditional laboratory testing well i, I think availability uh, drives in-house diagnostics testing and it, that's exactly right I, it, I i think if you have if you have the ability to run a particular test then it's behoove of you to at least uh look at that as a viable option and i think finished feed is one of those areas where there haven't been many alternative solutions other than sending it out to an outside laboratory, but now with the advent of tests from Bicam, they you are able to test your finished feed product and get a viable result, an actionable result that you can work off of. Can you go uh, explain a little bit about like what the uh, what the process is? So I, I I mean I have a vague idea, right? I think a lot of people do, but uh, so after you sample grain, um, it goes into the into the bag. Bag house? No, the scale house. Scale house. That's what we call them. <laughs> um, and usually uh, someone kind of performs the test there. Or what do they actually uh, physically have to do to, what does an employee physically have to do to be able to uh, do a correct, uh, a full test in one of these um, lateral, what are, flow tests. lateral strip? Yeah. Uh, lateral flow test. Well, it all starts off with the, with the uh, sampling. Uh, you want to make sure that you get a good sample. Uh, from the, the the truck or from whatever you're sampling, you want to get a, a good sample, um, and then you're going to grind that sample down, and that is key. You want a, a good representative sample, but you, then you want to take that sample, and you're grinding down in, in many instances either 5 to 10 grams of, of product, and from that, you would mix an aqueous solution into a, a vessel, put it on the uh, mixer. It mixes for, for 30 seconds. 
After a 30 second spin down, you would put it through a filter and you would take 100 microliters of the extract and apply that to the test, let it incubate for five minutes and place it in the reader. And after that five minutes and, and you you placing it into the reader, after about 10 seconds, you get a, a, a result. You will get a number that will tell you contamination or what the level of whatever toxin that you're testing for. And and you get and these readers can now sense more than one mycotoxin, right? I mean, obviously, you should be generally aware of the weather conditions in your area and what mycotoxins you might run into, but they can do more than one now, right? Yes, and um, you know, for example, Vicam, we have a the ability from that one extraction that I spoke of, that filtered amount that comes out, from that filtered sample, you can run up to six different mycotoxins. So it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, the, the, the time savings. Um, mm -hmm. Rather than do six workups on your, your, your tests, you would do one workup, and from that extraction, you would be able to run six different tests um you would incubate them stagger them out accordingly but you're eliminating the sampling process of grinding and spinning down you'll you would only have to do that one time so uh yes to answer your question absolutely um, and that's where it really comes into play as a as a uh, as a good asset to what we're doing and bringing solutions to the uh industry yeah definitely and I think solutions that are going to be more and more in demand is uh, is companies kind of. I mean, as we get better at record keeping in the industry, right, uh, and 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 having a kind of a a supply a traceable traceability and a supply chain that you can now figure out exactly where grain came from and where it where it's going. Um, it seems like there's going to be more and more of a demand from end users and to to perform these tests, right? Because if you know you're making pet food and a bunch of you know ethyl toxin gets in there, it can be a disaster. Oh, absolutely, and, and and that's what it is. It's a tool. It's it's a tool to help you manage your business, help as you said, traceability, and to find where the, if there is a disconnect along the line and, and take actionable uh, steps to correct. And th that's, you know, that's the beauty of, of, of what we're doing here is um, we're bringing those solutions that can, that can help. Yeah, definitely. And where should people start when they're kind of starting to think about, well, we need to either improve our program, uh, update it. If it's been, you know, five years, 10 years, and you haven't changed anything, you're probably out of date, right? Um, where should they start with that process? Um, reaching out to someone like you as, uh, Going online, what, what should they do? Well, I think going online is always great. I, we do have a a, a a website that is very tutorial and and will help you along. Um, but I think you know it starts with at, at, at the ground level. I think either they're test either you're testing or you're not testing. If you if you're not testing, definitely you need to get on board. Um, there are just advancements as we said earlier. The advancements that are currently available make it very easy for the end user to, to, to come on board and really work their uh, their risk management, their the, the attributes, the the, the the benefits that come with mycotoxin testing from economic standpoint and, and such. Uh, I, I think it's uh, one of those things where it's just made it easier for the end user to come on board as far as being a viable testing center, if you will, be their own lab. Um, and I think that's the that's how the I think the industry has evolved where we are today. Yeah, definitely, and continues to evolve. This is going to be the toughest question, I think. Uh, and it is basically i've like i said i've been here 10 years and it's already changed so much where do you see the next 10 years of mycotoxin testing going what advancements do you think are going to come along the line well i think that we, we i think we'll start to see uh first we'll start to see more testing 
uh, capabilities, different tests that come on board. And we spoke earlier about how individuals are testing currently today as far as what what it entails at, at the feed mill. And you, you know, you'll you have people that might be doing maybe just the one test or maybe two tests and they feel that it's sufficient. I think that the awareness is going to grow to a point where we'll see a a, a, a sort of a synergistic approach to testing where it's not just the one test that you should be doing for aflatoxin, but you should be doing the, the ultratoxin. You should be doing multiple tests that, that, that really give a better picture of what you're looking at in that sample that you're testing. And that is where I see the advancements in mycotoxin testing going. Excellent. Well, those are all the questions I have. Thank you so much for joining me today. Is there anything else you want to add or? Uh, no, uh, other than I, I I feel that, you know, I, I think that with um, mycotoxin testing, it, it, it allows just for us to, to really bring a, a, a needed, a, a needed approach to food safety and it helps it helps from a regulatory standpoint. Helps the helps the folks out there economically, uh, from a health standpoint, and bringing best product to the to the people. So, it, it's a very re- rewarding approach what we do to industry, and we just look forward to being of uh, of service and an asset to the customers that we that we serve. Awesome and excellent. Well, thank you so much and. I really enjoyed our conversation. I hope you come back again someday. And thank you again for joining me and talking a little bit about mycotoxins. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good day.